So I'm here at uh, Newcastle Central Station. It is just after quarter past six and I'm on my way to the second row central to find out what the second campaign is and I'm actually starting to feel the buzz. I'm quite excited to find out what the second campaign is. For some reason I'm on a train uh, earlier than the rest of my Northeast Team V leader colleagues so I'm going to beat them to rugby. Uh, yeah, but right now I'm in Costa having breakfast. <laughs> This is a rather deja vu shot. I have a distinct memory of being here a couple months earlier. Do you not see it? No! I don't know what place that was in. Oh. Where are you? Well, anyway. It's never too early to vlog. and awareness raising events, which consisted of assemblies, workshops, stalls, um, the music nights, quiz nights. Um, you all linked up with 110 um, food aid providers. Um, it was really great to hear kind of what you found out on the ground about what was happening um, to tackle the issue of food poverty in all of your local communities. Um, we also collected a massive three, 31,000 128 food items and we actually had a secret target of 30,000 so you exceeded that so you should be pretty proud of that um, and that is equivalent to 35,883 meals to people in food poverty so it's an amazing achievement and would have really made a massive difference to people um, in food poverty over Christmas. <laughs> home group for specific areas where they've really shone um, and kind of gone above and beyond um, in different areas of the programme. Okay, so the first yes. award is for media. Um, so this is for demonstrating exceptional online and offline use of media to promote the Beyond It in the Food campaign. campaign. So can we have to front um, Harris Qureshi? Yeah. Well, Come on, Jack Swan and Shane Aisha Hamidi, who's not here today, 
and Sarah Lee. <laughs> Community engagement, uh, we've got Georgia, Regina, <laughs> Lindsay McDougall and Nat Hawley. <laughs> above and beyond exceeding your targets and creating a real impact in the community. So can we have to the front Yasmin Clayson, Evie Hibbert, Attica Dabood and Daniel Green. Woo! So now to the Home Group Award. Um, so, um, so as you know, each of you were all awarded points for hitting your targets. But um, also, it was for getting your campaign plans um, and reports and budgets all in on time. So, over to Zara now to award the first home group to be awarded this year. Okay, so the winning team is. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> so, the winning team um, really, really amazed us and exceeded their targets and did very, very well as a team. It was great to see how much the leaders supported each other, whether it was going to each other's events, sharing each other's tweets or banding together to help pack food parcels. What really impressed me about my home group was their ability to bounce back from disappointments. What's fantastic is that none of those things mattered and you still achieved awesome things, so keep it up. Again, a big well done. And the home group with the most points is, drum roll, Amy Senior and London and the East. Joe. I'm 16 and I love football and pizza. I'm Jane. I'm 17 and I love dancing with my friends. 6am. Time to wake up. Wake up mum. Time for your medicine. A cup of tea? Ah, oh, thanks mum. Joe is a young carer. He is not alone. He is one of over 166,000 young carers in England. And with many young carers hidden from view and not supported, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Team V is taking action. Join us to raise the profile of young carers to make sure they and their families get the support they need and deserve. Do you care? Children's Society who are in the room, 
behind you. Woo, excuse me, Manila. And this is one of those things where I'm going to say something and I'm going to ask you to sit down if it doesn't apply to you. So, sit, stay standing up if you've heard of Young Carers. Excellent. Stay standing up if you think you know quite a bit about Young Carers. If you don't know very much, sit down. Okay. Stay standing up if you've worked with young carers or volunteered with young carers. No surprise to you guys. <laughs> okay, so you guys will probably know quite a bit this weekend and perhaps you'll be able to share some of your experiences with the rest of the team. For everyone else, today is going to be packed full of information. So as Fionn said, thank you, you can take a seat. Um, as Fionn said, take some time to digest it. Ask questions if something doesn't make sense. And of course, just let it soak in. It's gonna be an awesome campaign, and by the end of it, you'll be an expert. We, I think what's really important to emphasize is the regular and ongoing nature of this, um, and the Children's Society later will go into that. I know that a lot of you might have tweeted already, but if you haven't, a tweet should have just gone out from the Be Inspired account, I've got the thumbs up, and from the Team V account. So if we can take a minute to go onto our phones to retweet that, and also to send a tweet about your response to the campaign, that would be fantastic. So I just want to start by saying it's really great for us as the Children's Society to see so many young leaders here who are you know, going to learn about this issue and are going to be passionate, are going to go out there and raise awareness because we're really passionate about this issue. So it's really great to see all of you here. You might have heard of the Children's Society. We are a national children's charity and we work across the country with a range of different disadvantaged children. So our focus is to work with the most disadvantaged children across the country. And that can be particularly around young people affected by childhood poverty and adolescent neglect. So although we in our project, the Include programme, we work specifically with young carers, but the Children's Society as an organisation work with young people across the country from all different backgrounds and who are facing all different struggles and issues. I'm sure they do have a good idea about what emotional well-being is, but they call me up to today like this. That's quite helpful. So, looking at emotional well-being, do you think it's as clear-cut as it being you have a positive emotional well-being and negative emotional well-being, or poor? No. No? Can you tell me why? So, I am now back in Newcastle because I have exams this following week, so I opted not to stay for both days are resi, which I'm quite sad about because you know I was having fun. But you know, at least I, at least I got to stop, at least I got to see people, and you now I know what the, the campaign is. So obviously this week I'm gonna concentrate on my exams, and then I'm gonna then focus on campaign two. So that should be fun. So I will see you guys for that. <laughs> 